Okay, this is Sean B. Bradley. I'm here at BMW Poland Park, and DJ are gonna come really close so we can kind of go over this. This is really exciting. You all are building a multi-million dollar customer development center. This facility is 65,000 square feet, $21 million. It's exciting, but what's even more exciting is that you are all part of building a multi-million dollar department from scratch. You are not car sales professionals. You're not even, you know, phone sales professionals. You are professionals that are building a multi-million dollar department from scratch. Talk about a resume maker, that's exciting. Forget about working in a car dealership, you are working in a company that makes gazillions of dollars and you're gonna make millions and millions of dollars just out of your inner department. Is that exciting, folks? Yeah. Louder? Yes. 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 Okay, we're on camera, remember, we gotta be a little bit. <laughs> All right, so now, what I wanna to explain to you is the difference between a Kia dealership, a Ford dealership, or Honda dealership versus BMW as it relates to internet sales. First and foremost, I just want you to understand that you know, a car is a car, an automobile is an automobile, I understand that, but the major difference to me is the fact that people don't have to buy these vehicles. Okay, people don't have to buy these. Traditional um, non-highline, when I say highline, it means for you, BMW, Porsche, um, Mercedes, etc. When people buy a conventional vehicle like a Ford, a Chevy, a Toyota, a Honda, they need those vehicles to get to work, to go to the babysitter, to go to the grocery store, etc. People don't have to buy these vehicles. They choose to buy these vehicles. Respectfully, some of these vehicles cost as much as houses do. Am I correct? Think about that for a second. These vehicles, a car that you're selling, costs more than some people's houses. Heck, this might even cost more than a couple row homes in Philadelphia. You get a row home for like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. You've got vehicles that are $140,000. You've got, like, you got a whole family, the cousins, aunts, and uncles could live in your car, metaphorically speaking. Does that make sense? Yes. So when you are understanding that your targeted audience does not have to buy this vehicle, you've got to change your paradigm. You've got to change your strategy. The other aspect of this that I think is very important is that they have the money to decide. I'm not saying money is everything, but money gives you the power to choose. Does that make sense? Yes. They don't have to necessarily be incentivized by a certain you know, coupon or a discount, etc. It's value. You have to sell with value. And we talked about this earlier today that a BMW is the ultimate driving machine. Well, you need to convey to your prospect and articulate the ultimate experience. They could buy a BMW from any other BMW dealership around here. We're on video, so I'm not going to mention competitors' names. I'm not going to give them any ether. But I will say that your website looks like any other cookie-cutter BMW website. If I'm a prospect, how can I go here and decide I want to buy from BMW of Orland Park? You can't. So you need to work on everything from your website to your email templates, to your email messages, to your voicemail messages, to everything that you do. Everything you do has to convey and personify that you are better. You're better. And remember we talked about this before, that there was a 2012 Google cross-shopper analysis report that was done with Google, Compete, and Polk Research, and it shows that approximately 70% of your Highline shoppers are cross-shopping your brands. If somebody's looking for a 5 Series BMW, they could be also looking at what? A Lexus, ES, GS, they could be looking at what? Infinity. An Infinity, they could be looking at what? A Mercedes, E-Class, e correct? Mm -hmm. They could be looking at what? Anything. They're looking at an Audi, yes. What we're saying here, people are like, oh heck no, not an Audi, sorry. But what you need to understand and respect is that your customers, your prospects, not customers, that your prospects are absolutely looking at five to eight other dealerships, five to eight other websites. Look at you, you guys are beautiful, you're a professional. There's probably five to eight other dealerships that have other professional people. This is not McDonald's. You know, other Mercedes dealerships or other BMW dealerships are gonna have other professionals. And you've gotta assume, I know it's hard, but you've gotta assume that they're as good or better than you, yes? But they're not trained. That's the other thing. Proper training can make you better than someone that's naturally gifted because you're going to have disciplines, you're going to have habits, you're going to have executionable uh, things that you can do each and every day without exception, without fail. Consistency will prevail over just raw talent. Do you understand me?
So what I want you to understand is just assume and respect that if you get a prospect on a three series, especially three series, that's an inexpensive BMW. That could be anything. That could be a Cadillac CTS person. That could be a Lincoln. I know you're thinking, oh no, but yes. You get more car. I'm sorry, I'm a BMW and a Mercedes fan, but you get more car, probably in a CTS or a Lincoln, than you would for a C-Class or a three series as far as space or options or something. It's not a better branded vehicle, but you have more items, more stuff. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what you need to be able to do, and this is just an example, is that if you've got a prospect, you've got to assume that they're looking at not only your other BMW competitors, but they're looking at Mercedes, Infiniti, Lexus, Jaguar, all that stuff, correct? Mm -hmm. So you've got to respond faster. You've got to respond with a more dynamic message, and you can't turn around and say, oh, we're number one. What do you think another 20 or $50 million BMW dealership is going to say? We're number three, we're number five. No, they're going to proclaim divinity just like you are. These other BMW dealerships are going to talk about how they're number one, how they're the best, how their dealership is a palace. Just pan the, the thing over there. This is a $21 million facility. So what? They might not have a $21 million facility, but they got an $18 million facility. Or they got a, a $10 million facility. I mean, how many millions of dollars do you need to, to sell a car? Do you follow what I'm saying? When your pitch is the same, how could a prospect make an educated decision on choosing you? You need to make sure that what you convey is different and powerful. And here how you, here's how you do that. And I train this with, with not Highline, but it's even more important, I, in my opinion, for Highline. It's value, it's relationships. So uh, I know that you're a fan of Elise Kephart. Elise, shout out to you, girl, from Sunset Honda. DJ is a big fan, and he's looking forward to seeing you at the Internet Sales 20 group. But Elise Kephart, for example, every single time that she engages a prospect, she sends them a video email response. You can send a personalized video email response. How cool is that? If somebody's looking for a, like I know that DJ's trying to spot me and trade out of the GL450 to get into the new uh, X6 M uh, mini SUV or sport utility. SAV, Sean. Sports. Activity vehicle. Uh, whatever. Sports activity vehicle. He's trying to spot me on this. Again, what he could do, if I was a normal prospect, not, not a, a partner of his, he could send me a video off of the iPhone like he's taking me right now, and I could turn around and have, let's just say, one of the salespeople hold it, and there's even devices, the monopods, that you don't need anybody to hold it, where if it was me that was DJ, or DJ could do it himself, he could say, like with the video, hey, Sean, it was awesome talking today, and I gotta tell you, you have exquisite taste. That BMW uh, X6M is gorgeous, and I understand that you have the Porsche Cayenne, and again, I totally think it's a beautiful vehicle, but this, you're about to upgrade to first class and take a look at this vehicle, and he could turn on it and give me a personalized video off his iPhone, within seconds he could upload it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Another couple things that you could do, and I know that you, so you guys are mostly new, but DJ, I know that you've had this experience before, I guarantee you, with all the hundreds and thousand plus leads that you're gonna get over the months that you do this, you're gonna have situations where people are gonna explain what? It's their birthday, it's their anniversary, it's their kid's day, it's you know grandparents' day, there's a death in the family, somebody's sick, somebody got injured. They're going to give you all this incredible opportunity to care, to do stuff. You mentioned Elise Kephart that, are, that is sending gifts, edible or, you know, arrangements, flowers, what have you. This is Highline. People could choose if they want to buy a freaking helicopter, they could buy a, a private jet, or they could buy a $150,000 automobile, $120,000 automobile. They have money. You know what they want? They want to be respected. They want to be appreciated. They want value. They want people they're going to do business with to treat them with the respect that they feel that they deserve and they've earned, right or wrong. Right. Okay, I used to work in the nightclub industry. Can you somebody fix that so that it gets the background here? And this is a true story. The nightclub industry is based on a caste system. You have a crowd of people, which is the fabulous, elite, super rich. They dress in Jean-Paul Gaultier, Gianfranco. They dress in fabulous clothes. Then you have the B crowd of people, people that got money that look good, but they're not just quite the elite. And then you have the C crowd of people, which are crowd fillers. They get sprinkled into the clubs to make the other people feel good about themselves. Does it sound horrible? It is what it is. What I'm trying to get at is that people are in naturally a caste system. Do you understand me? People don't want, anybody in this room want to 